we're going to be talking about the seven mountain mandate of the new apostolic reformation. Welcome, this is People of the Free Gift, where we ground believers in their identity in Christ and equip them to reach those caught in religion. If you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button so you don't miss any future content related to cults and how to share the gospel with them. And so, like I said, the Seven Mountain Mandate did some research, found some quotes, and we're going to go through it together. So, those who follow the Seven Mountain Mandate believe that in order for, the, for Christ to return to earth, the church must take control of the seven major spheres of influence in society for the glory of Christ. And once the world has been made subject to the kingdom of God, Jesus will return and rule the world. So here are the seven mountains according to the seven mountain mandate. Education, religion, family, business, government and military, arts and entertainment, and media. So these seven sectors of society are thought to mold the way everyone thinks and behaves. So to tackle societal change, these seven mountains must be transformed. The mountains are also referred to as pillars, shapers, molders, and spheres. Those who follow the seven mountain mandate speak of occupying the mountains, invading the culture, and transforming society. The seven mountain mandate has its roots in dominion theology, which started in the early 1970s with the goal of taking dominion of the earth, twisting Genesis 128 to include a mandate for Christians to control civil affairs and all other aspects of society. The new apostolic reformation with its self-appointed prophets and apostles has also influenced the Seven Mountain Mandate movement, lending dreams and visions and other extra-biblical revelations to the mandate. The Seven Mountain Mandate says that it is the duty of all Christians to create a worldwide kingdom for the glory of Christ. Teachers in the movement use Isaiah 2.2, which mentions mountains in an attempt to support their view. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills, and all nations will stream to it the principal goal of dominion theology. And the Seven Mountain Mandate is political and religious domination of the world through the implementation of the moral laws and subsequent punishments of the Old Testament. Lance P. Walnew coined the term Seven Mountain Mandate and its most pr prominent teacher. Malno adapts the, adapts the missionary mandate of Jesus to his disciples and go and make disciples of all nations into a mandate to affect social transformation. He reasons that since churches already have a presence in the, every nation of the world, we need to now concentrate on influencing the systems, the mountains with, within these nations. The problem, according to Walno, is that Christians are not currently influencing society outside the church. Christians have left the mountains susceptible to the gates of hell, which are spiritual portals over the king's influence shapers of those mountains. While now's teachings is loosely based on the Abrahamic covenant, which promised Abraham a seed and lasting inheritance. Also, Israel was promised in Deuteronomy 28, 12 through 14 to be the head and not the tail among the nations. Proponents of the seven mountain mandate and further the church, not Israel as the entity to claim that promise, it is now up to believers to move in proximity to the gates of hell and position themselves to exert the greatest amount of influence. The church then needs to be dissected into micro components and infiltrate the mountains. Since every Christian can position himself at the top of every mountain, each individual is to find his particular smaller peak and be leader in that realm. The leading edge of the seven mountain mandate is the new apostolic reformation, which teaches that the church of the 21st century will be ruled by apostles and prophets. The movement is not governed by a specific denomination, but by the alleged apostles and prophets who, of course, claim to receive direct revelation from God. In lending credence to modern day prophets and apostles, the NAR denigrates the Bible and Sola Scriptura, emphasizes experience oriented theology, and promotes mysticism. The New Apostolic Reformation and proponents of the Seven Mountain Mandate have abandoned biblical teaching on the end times, choosing to believe that Christians must set the stage for Jesus' second coming by achieving dominion over the world systems. According to Seven Mountain Theology, Jesus will only return to a world that mirrors the kingdom of God. The idea of 
parallels the New Age teaching that anticipates a cosmic spiritual shift when man becomes a co-redeemer of planet Earth. Christians are called to be lights in the world, Matthew 5, 14. There is no biblical requirement, however, to take the helm of all the world systems in order to usher in Christ's kingdom. The Bible says that the world will grow worse, not better in the last days, 2 Timothy 3, 1 and 13, 2 Peter 3, 3. The theology associated with the Seven Mountain Mandate is dangerous and it sheds a terribly negative light on Christians everywhere. The Seven Mountain teaching puts a tremendous burden on believers to perform, make progress in their relative spheres of influence, and set the stage for Jesus' return to earth. All without a definite end point. Little emphasis is placed on the gospel message of salvation by grace alone, through faith alone in Jesus Christ. The movement is more about staking claims and taking control. The Seven Mountain Mandate is a movement led by false prophets and it should be avoided and exposed whenever Bible-believing Christians encounter it. And so I just want to give some thoughts along with that. Um, that I noticed that a lot of the things that they were citing were from the Old Testament. So going back to the creation account, going back to the Abrahamic covenant, going back to the law of Moses. And um, in doing that, you are going back to a period of time in the Bible in which God was dealing with a nation and their interaction with other nations as a reflection of God and his character in order to be a light to the world. And Jesus does say you are a light to the world, but he says that to individuals. And in the new covenant, that's exactly what you have. The Holy Spirit coming in individuals, not into a temple that's made with hands and not by a law that's externally motivated, but by a law that's written in our hearts and the other thing is that this really puts a lot of importance on us in terms of, I would not be surprised if you could turn around from saying that we have to do these things in order for Jesus to be able to establish his kingdom here on earth. That basically we they're saying we establish his kingdom, he just comes and occupies his throne. Then there's not a whole lot of a stretch from saying that to starting to teach that you are dependent by your good works to do to get yourself saved and into a relationship with God and have peace with God and forgiveness of your sins and eternal life. And I don't see a whole lot of new apostolic reformation teachers currently doing that, but I wouldn't see that far from down the road. I would I, I wouldn't be surprised if they started doing that. But I want to hear your your thoughts on the subject. If you have insights or questions that I did not cover in this video, please put them down below. I'll be choosing some for this week's QA. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up on this video. If you like the content from the for today, share this video with others. Um, who are interested in cults and how to reach out with the gospel to them, consider checking out my Patreon page that I just started. And uh, there's lots of great rewards and incentives at every level. And there's goals that I'm looking to hit in order to begin my next project, my, be able to release my next book. Um, you know about sharing Jesus with the cults. And so I'm thinking about and already know what I'm going to be doing for my next project. I'm just looking for some of the funding up front this time because I'm kind of making it up on the back end um, after writing the first one. And so until next time, may God's grace be with you.